In order to live an extraordinary and abundant life, you must focus on your internal battle and win within. My name is Randy Wilson, and welcome to the Rich Mind Podcast. All right, everyone, welcome back to the Rich Mind Podcast. And today, we're going to have a discussion with my beautiful wife, Stacy Wilson. We're going to talk about time and how time seems to be slipping, slipping, slipping into the future, as that song used to say back in the day. I don't know where that even came from. That was just that song literally just popped into my head as I was saying that. Anyways, time is just moving by super fast. And you've probably heard that growing up that as you get older, time seems to go by faster and faster and faster. And uh, we're here today to uh, acknowledge that, yes, that is very true. Uh, Stacy has some ideas as far as how that's impacted her with her dreams and her goals. Uh, she has big visions for, uh, and I'll let her get into it. I'm not even going to give the details. I'll let her give some of those details if she chooses. But the idea today and the topic that we want to discuss is time and how we as busy parents, now we are grandparents, uh, business owners, entrepreneurs, just trying to get out there and get as much accomplished as we possibly can. How do we do that in what feels like a very short period of time? So without further ado, let me quit babbling and let's bring on Stacy and let's have a discussion about how time is impacting us and then how we're trying to control it the best we possibly can. Sounds great. Yes, time is a rapid moving thing in my life. <laughs> and I cannot, you realize the older you get, the less you can control it. You know, you, you think you can control it, but wow, unless you really focus on it, it's something that's, it's its own little beast that is not controllable. So, but one so of the most valuable to, things we have. So if I go into, can I start singing again? Can we start singing for the folks? Sure. Listening to us? That's do always you, fantastic. You're going to let me do that? Let, ah, let's wait. Let, maybe at the end. Let's save it. <laughs> let's wait until <laughs> I hit stop and then maybe I can start <laughs> singing again. Because Lord knows that's uh. <laughs> That's definitely a skill of mine is my sing, singing ability. For sure. For sure. So for sure. <laughs> time, as you said, is just like whizzing by and it doesn't feel mm -hmm. like you even have enough time to get some of the things done. Describe what that means to you. I mean, can you put it into words, kind of how you feel in terms of what time you have during the day? Yeah. Um, wow. That's a heavy question. Um, yeah. I, I think I... I tell you a lot of times, you know, you go into a, I go into a day with good intentions, especially if it's a day that I get to be home all day. Like that is a rare occurrence for me. A day a week at home is like significant, but it's that day at home that goes so fast. I mean, 24 hours feels like six by the time we get to everything that I'm trying to get through. It's like, oh my gosh, it's dark outside. When did that happen? Um, so yeah, it's, it, it is a challenge for me, um, being in the world that I live in, in the wedding world, event world, I love it. As I've mentioned before on this podcast with you, I love it. But at the same time, it is a time stealer because I am always two, three weeks from now planning and living and rolling things out. I mean, I'm living today and making it happen today, but I've been really focusing on something that's three weeks out from now so that none of the details get missed when I do get to the event. So I've told you time and time again, I feel like I'm, you know, it's April 1st, but I'm already really deep diving into what's happening May 2nd, May 3rd, May 4th. And April just becomes something that I'll experience, but not something that I'm able to be a part of, if that makes sense to the people out there. Um, so I really have to take my time and focus on evenings when I have it off or mornings when I have it off or days to really focus on the things that are important and that I need to be doing for myself or for you guys, the family, um, so that my time feels useful and feels, um, like downtime sometimes. <laughs> so when you're. So I experienced that with you, right? We experienced yes. that on a week-to-week, day-to-day basis. So I'm trying to think of a way to ask you this question where it would uh, uh, hit you in a way where you would be able to answer it uh, the best way. But the idea of being present in the moments. Mm -hmm. So 
in the success space, I don't know how else to put it, right? If you're trying to follow and become better at anything, whether you're trying to become a better parent, become a better, better business person, whatever, it doesn't matter what you're trying to be better at. That I that's where I'm lumping that into the success space. You're told that goals and and go, 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 get, 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 right? It's like you're always trying to right. check off the next box. But that, in my opinion, sometimes, and that's where I don't want to put words in your mouth, it feels like you don't allow yourself to be present in the moments to enjoy today, to enjoy right now, because you're always stuck in this future moment that I get the importance of having a, a future vision. But at the same time, I think that detracts in us experiencing the life that we truly want, which is today and right now. Right. Yeah. I have to really compartmentalize and focus on, I'm learning. I have to really focus on a few hours at a time. I can't focus on the whole day or the whole week anymore. And I think we've, you've started to see that hopefully a little bit. Um, I really try to slow myself down. So if I know I'm, you know, some from like 6 a.m. to noon is a time frame. And I try to, if I'm in something or doing something, I try to be in that and not worried about what I have at four or what I have at seven or what I have at whatever time or what I have three days from now. That was always a big thing because I have, a lot of times I have big things a few days out. So I've really tried to allow myself and structure myself to stay where and when something is happening. And that's not always easy, but I really try to focus on it. So that's what's going to be my next question. So how are you doing that? Meaning is it, well, I don't even want to put thoughts into what it could be, but do you have any, do you have a way to articulate how you are actually doing that? Um, I'm trying to get better about using a calendar or at least I'm a, I've always been a list person. So if I can get a list made of all the things that are rumbling around in my brain, cause there's always a lot going on a lot. I should be's and could be's and what do I want to be's and all that fun stuff that's going on, you know, and especially when it comes to a day off, you know, I want to clean the whole house. I want to go get groceries. I want to spend time with you. I want to talk to all the kids. I want to watch the movies. I want to read a book. I want to do cross stitch. I want to want to want to want to want to want to right? But then it's getting, once I can get it all out of my head, then I can take a step back and be like, okay, what's really the best approach for this particular day or these particular hours? What's the best use? If I only have a three hour window, is it going to get the groceries and get back and get them put away and then move on to the thing? Or is it sitting down, sending emails, doing business? Or is it saying, no, I'm just going to sit this morning and talk to Randy today or, or no, one of the kids needs attention or needs something and be like, okay, no, I've got to give them that full hour that they need. Um, so it's trying to prioritize right now for me, it's prioritizing things that are the most important. Like I, you mentioned it probably in past podcasts of me, but I try to touch base with each of my people each day in some way. So who's, who are your people? Just so that we so my people. So I, <laughs> I usually touch base with you every morning. We spend a good hour, generally a good hour every morning. Just how are you this morning? What's your day look like? What do you need tonight when I get back? Whatever that day, or if we have the whole day together, that's a completely different conversation. That's a three hour time frame to sit together. Um, but then I make sure that if um, I haven't heard from a kid, I text. I text at least all three of them. Check in on them. I usually try to phone call two of them, whether I'm going to work, home from work, or just hanging out with you. I make sure that I try to talk to all of them. I try to prioritize. There's probably a good two, three friends that I try to check in with. Be nice to say honestly weekly, but definitely bi-weekly at the minimum. I try to check in with them and um, a couple family members that I try to check in with at least weekly. Now there again, that time frame gets away, and then I realize, oh, you look at the text, and you're like, huh, that's that's been 15 days ago. I probably should do something about that. Um, that's when I try not to beat myself up because I really try to think about touching base with the people and not just being busy. It's easy to be busy. Yes, it's very easy to just yeah. be busy and not necessarily accomplishing mm-hmm. the right things. So, right, how do you? how do you prioritize those things? You mentioned your people, which that's why I wanted to clarify Mm -hmm. what you meant by that. So (laughs) how do you, how do you, so time is, 
time is just a, a man-made construct. There is no such thing as time. Mm-hmm. And my, you know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's man-made. You can, we all have the same amount of it, but it's about how you use it is what's the most important. Right. So is there, are there, you mentioned about your calendar. Are there any other ways that you try to construct your day? Do you try to make sure you stay on top of what's the most important, whether it is contacting your people or are there anything else that you try to do? Um, I try to write down my top three. If there, if it's a, if it's a busy day, it depends on what kind of world I'm in that day. If it is a full on wedding day, there's probably a top 10 list of things that have got to happen. And if it's a normal office day, then there's probably two or three things that are the top priority. And then it's what else at home. Um, and then if it's a home day, then it's like, okay, what really needs to get done and what would just be nice to get it done. And is it better, you know, there again, when, when the kids or you are like, Hey, let's go do this. I 90% of the time we're like, okay, yep, let's go do that. And forget the groceries, forget the cleaning, forget the laundry, forget whatever else is on the list. Right. Um, allowing myself the flexibility to go with what's fun is sometimes something I have to remind myself to do that it's okay to slow down and enjoy whatever gets presented in the moment. And that just because I had a list or I had a plan doesn't always mean that that's the right way to use that time. So talk through that. So that is a discussion that you have with yourself. So Mm -hmm. if there are individuals, man or woman, doesn't matter who's listening to us today, that is struggling with that idea, thinking that all they have to do is just, as I mentioned, just go, 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 right? It's, It's full throttle, pedal to the metal, all the time. Right. And it's just, life is just chaotic and they don't feel like they have any sense of time. What talk about that dialogue you have with yourself to try and allow yourself to give you its permission. You're basically giving yourself permission to be okay with taking a step back, going out and doing something quote unquote, that would be fun. Right. Versus like you said, cleaning, because we don't necessarily like cleaning, doing the dishes, you know, the all the normal stuff that we all have to do around our homes. Talk about that dialogue that you have with yourself. What gives yourself or how do you give yourself permission to do those things? Um, For me, it's I think about who it's going to affect. Like if it's you or the kids or my sister or a friend um, saying, hey, can we get together to do dinner? Or, hey, mom, let's go to Top Golf. or hey, mom, whatever the thing is. In the moment, it's like, okay, do I, one, do I really have, free time to give to it. A lot of times if we stop, if I stop, if anybody were to stop and be like, okay, yeah, I really actually have free time. It's just how you decide to allot it to be used. Um, but if it, for me, it's always, am I going to be able to impact the other person? If me taking the time away from what I should be doing to spend some one-on-one time or full family time or whatever it is, if that's going to be a huge happiness impact for the other person, I'm down for it every time. I'll put whatever it is on the back burner because I'll figure out, I'll stay up till two in the morning getting it done. Um, If it really needed to be accomplished, I am more likely to give in to a person and make that person feel good or seen or happy or whatever word you want to put um, over the thing that needs to be done. Cause I can always get the thing done is how my brain thinks about it. And it's always been that way since my kids were little. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's how I finished college, right? Put everything on the back burner and do homework till four in the morning and get up at six with little toddlers and go for it all over it again. So every day, yeah. all day and a four point, whatever yeah. GPA and top of your class and the whole nine <laughs> yards. But that's why you're a super right. achiever. That's for sure. So as far as the, you mentioned to me earlier today, and we've actually been talking about the last few weeks, it's we're as of this recording, depends on when anybody's listening to this, we're already into April of 2024 Yes. and how you've, <laughs> see, there you go again. <laughs> we're already a quarter of the year of 2024 is already in the books. Tell me about how that makes you feel and tell me about where you see yourself for the next three quarters of, of this year going forward. It makes me feel exhausted. Always. I tell you that all the time. I feel like <laughs> I am always running and trying to catch up because it's like, okay, how 
when did those months happen? There again, like I told you, I I think a lot of it's the world I live in with what I do for a living and I love what I do. But it yeah, it's different. It's hard to believe. I just can't even believe it's April. Um so I promised myself that starting this new quarter because the first quarter just went crazy and it was supposed to be not crazy and then it was. So it's just telling yourself that it's going to keep being crazy, even though it looks like a few months from now things slow down. It won't be that way when we get there. So I have really, really started focusing on looking. I have to look at the whole month, granted, and I try to prepare now for the whole month and find my pockets of opportunity and really cross off ahead of time. If I know I'm going to have three Sundays off, by golly, three Sundays I'm going to have off and start thinking now, how am I going to use that time? Who can I spend it with? What day are we going to have all the kids over? What day do I need to go on a trip? I have a friend coming in from out of town, which is huge. And for sure, figuring out how to block off time for that. Um, it just becomes, what are my choices? What am I willing to put on the shelf because I have something else that I want to be a part of and allowing myself to be a part of it. That's probably the biggest thing, permission to not have to worry about all that stuff. And luckily you encourage me to do that. Don't worry about the cleaning. Don't worry about the dishes. We'll get them. I'll get them, whatever. Um, but then allow it to be an internal permission that, okay, it is okay. It will be okay. And even in the day when it is a busy day and I am in the wedding and all that, I'm learning to slow down and see, which I've always enjoyed the moments in the wedding, but I take them in a little bit longer now and a little bit slower than I used to. Like instead of it being a three minute window, now it's like a five to seven minute window that I fully allow myself to be present. And I think that's the bigger thing. I'm learning to take mental breaks and snapshots or mini videos even now in my brain of what is happening around me rather than rapid fire into the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, trying to remember to stop and internalize what just happened. So does that make sense? (laughs) Yeah, it does to me because I I, I live it with you. And yeah, you you said that very well. I appreciate you going there. So one thing with what you do is you help brides with your wedding coordinating kind of eliminate a lot of this time stress in their life. Let's, let's pivot a little bit. Let's talk about that. How you are putting some stress upon yourself, admittedly. So right. The day of is a stressful day and you're making sure everything's going well. And I don't want to put woods in your mouth because I'm not there doing it for you or with you. But at the same time, you've come home and described it to me. Talk about how the importance, important is or how important it has been when you've, because you've witnessed and been around weddings where they haven't had help or support and how stressful that can be for that bride or even for the entire family because of the, Mm -hmm. the process of coordinating the time just isn't there. You've, you've said to me many times, or you've seen like, there'll be a timeline for a wedding. A bride will want to be here at this time, moving on to the next thing. You know what I mean? It's like it's scheduled out, but you look at that timeline from your experience and you're like that, there's no way that's going to (laughs) happen. So that just initiates some stress that is unneeded. If they were to look for somebody such as yourself to help them through that process and managing that time, take a few minutes, talk about what that's like when you see that with a coordinator and also how it goes with, without such help. Right. Yeah. It's, uh, (laughs) it's a lot. And that's where, that's why I love what I do because there again, my end goal, my top goal in life is to see other people happy and really enjoying something that they're supposed to be happy and fully enjoying. And so when it comes to weddings, that is a thousand percent. The one day that you're just supposed to be having all the fun, the whole family, not just a bride, not just the groom, but everybody that's there and involved. And yes, when I see the groups that come through that don't have a coordinator and they think that cousin Becky and aunt Sue and whoever is going to be able to help them who doesn't do that either. Um, and maybe they're not, I say as a, as a coordinator, you have to be pushy, but not pushy. If there's a timeline that you're trying to stick to, 
to get things happening on time as close to possible, then you've got to be a little pushy. And a lot of times family isn't going to be pushy with family, especially when it's the bride. And so that's when it starts to fall apart because they're like, well, I should. And it's like, yeah, you need to. Um, but they're not going to push. They're going to let it, let it happen, you know, and let things happen. And then that's when you realize that that wedding is going to start 15 minutes late. And, and when 15 minutes late, by the time you get to dinner is 45 minutes late. It just keeps compounding. It rapidly compounds. And so, yeah, as a coordinator, I personally love to take that on and I'm not afraid to say, okay, yeah, you've got 10 more minutes to get these pictures done. And then I'm putting the bride away. And you've got to be willing to take in the reins. You've got to be willing to go up to the bride and groom and be like, okay, we're done we need to go sit down so we can get dinner started. Even though they're wanting to meet every guest, everybody wants to talk to everybody, but it's like, okay, guys, you, your guests have been waiting an hour already for dinner. You can keep talking or we can get you sat down and get dinner started. And then you can go back to talking and it's just giving them the little, the little oomphs along the way that, okay, we need to get cake cut. So then we can give people some cake because people are sitting around waiting on a cake, but we can't have it till you cut it. And it's just little things along the way that when you're in the moment, you're not thinking about it all. So if you have somebody behind the scenes encouraging you, okay, this is the next thing. Okay, this is the next thing. And then you get to where it's party time and you can actually, they look back and at the end of the night, they're like, we're so glad. So glad you kept things moving. So glad we did this. So glad we did that. Because I've had to present in the past that you can either do this and keep doing what you're doing and we're going to have to give up X, Y, Z, whatever that is are you okay with not doing that anymore? Sometimes it's going back outside to get the sunlight pictures. Are you willing to give up sunlight pictures because you're pushing dinner back another 15, 20 minutes? And so then it becomes their choice. I don't make them do something that they don't want to be doing. Um, Usually it's tossing the bouquet that goes away and the game that they were going to do and stuff like that is what goes away. But um, it's presenting them with a choice. We can keep doing what you want to be doing. I'm all for it. But you also said you wanted this. So you make the choice. And it it's good. And, it's, and there again, it's a time crunch. Everything is on a time crunch. There is an end time, whether you want to have an end time or not. Um, so it's up to them. I mean, they get to choose along the way. But when you have family helping you do that, they don't, they don't do that. They don't remind you that, hey, by the way, <laughs> you wanted to do this. <laughs> so it's interesting. It's interesting when it has help and doesn't have help. Which has taught you how, number one, you do that for a living, right? That's what you do. You help brides coordinate and orchestrate beautiful weddings. But then how you've taken that information and you've tried to internalize it then into your own life, which is the beginning part of this conversation that we've had today and how you're trying to orchestrate and coordinate and all those things that are going on with the all the different moving parts for our family, but then individually as well. And how you've learned and tried to articulate those things to persuade and help folks maybe see a different vision that maybe they're not seeing based on the stress that they're applying to themselves because of, of time. Right. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely a learning curve doing what I do for a living. Cause you learn down to the five minute schedule of what needs to happen and how fast you can get it done. So, which, yeah, I try to apply daily now. Which I don't you never always succeed though. Yeah. No, I never used to. Yeah. I don't always succeed. (laughs) Well, no, I was a procrastinator at heart, big big time. (laughs) And you said that, not me. I know. I I admittedly (laughs) admit that I used to be a major. I still have my moments. Um, But I always had the thing that there's always more time, there's always plenty of time. And there is, but there isn't. It's an interesting double edged sword almost. There is, well, stuff but there just, isn't. Things just stack, meaning you have a yeah. moment. If, if you let something go, it still has to get done at some point, and it just stacks. So there's more stuff gets stacked and stacked and stacked to the point where you just can't even do any of it anymore. It's been my experience. So, yeah, I understand exactly what you're saying. That's where it becomes tough for sure. So uh, as we bring this one in for a landing today, talking about time, uh, we kind of talked briefly about your uh, wedding coordinating if there are young ladies or even families out there that are about to have a wedding going on in their, their life uh, 
and they need some help. They're desperately no, they know for a fact that like you said, aunt, somebody and their cousin here. And those are not the right people that need, that they need to have at the helm running the show. What are the best places for people to learn more about you and the services that you offer with your wedding coordinating? Um, you can get in touch with me on my website. That's probably the easiest place. It's stacyjwilson.com. Um, and then I'm on social media as Stacy J. Wilson and Stacy Keese Wilson on Facebook. Um, yeah, reach out to me, DM me there, but definitely through the website, there's ways to contact me. My number's there. My emails are there, all that. And, and I can speak from experience. She's great with families, with brides. It's amazing the experience that she's and the level of experience that she can bring uh, to the table. So yeah, if you have, or if you know of somebody that's about ready to experience some, and it doesn't have to necessarily even be a, a wedding. She's very good at different events as well. Uh, orchestrating uh, the timeframes and all of the stuff. I'm not even going to sit here and pretend like I even know what it is, but it's, uh, it's very elaborate and there's a lot of moving parts. She handles them very well, which brings a lot of stress into her life, meaning the time, which is what this prompted this discussion today. So if you need any help with that, definitely reach out to her at her website at stacyjwilson.com and uh, yeah, book a, call, book a call and see if uh, she might be able to help. So Stacey has been fun as always. I just enjoy our conversations and look forward to bringing you back again. Thank you for having me. I can't wait. Yes. So folks, go out there. Have a fantastic day. Try to get better at managing your time. Understand that it's it's tough. We're all struggling with things that we have to do, we should do's, coulda, woulda, shoulda's, all of that stuff. We're all dealing with the right, all the same things. But the ability to be present in the moment at any given time, whether it's uh, with a family member, whether it's with a friend, whether it's recording a podcast, whether it's listening to a podcast, whatever it is, Give yourself some permission to take some time for yourself, slow down a little bit, and you'll be surprised at how quickly you'll be able to move forward into the things that are most important to you and your goals moving forward. And uh, Stacy and I are definitely here to support you in any way we possibly can. So go out there, have a fantastic day, and I look forward to bringing back Stacy and another guest again very soon. Until then, bye now. Thank you for joining me on the Rich Mind Podcast. And remember, your external world is a reflection of what's going on inside of you. So focus every day on that internal battle and win within. Until next time, my friends.